want to first thank you for purchasing one of our take and make kits. So this is our very first take and make kit. So it's exciting stuff. So what will arrive to you or what you've probably already seen is this box and inside is almost every single thing that you need in order to make these adorable pumpkins. So box. So we have two different size pumpkins. You are going to get a little pumpkin. You're going to get our business card because like it's so cute. And you are going to get two pumpkins. You'll get a smaller one, this little guy, and a larger one. And all the paints that you need to be able to paint them. Now, you're getting three small containers of paint, which I realize doesn't seem like a whole lot, but it actually covers a lot, and I guarantee you'll end up with paint left over to paint something else, should you choose to. So you've got your paints, you've got a brush, and I'm gonna show you some cool things that you can do with your brush. And you have some, um, you have some vinyl, some stencils. How cute is that? It's my monogram, yep, and a little give thanks. And of course, because it's ever so cute, you've got a little chevron here. Where does it crown? No, don't do that. Um, more chevron and stripes and polka dots. So there is literally an unlimited amount of things that you could do. Right now, just with this kit, I wish I had 22 pumpkins because I could do glorious things with all these pumpkins. So the first thing you want to think about is what kinds of things that you want to do with your pumpkins. So you're going to end up doing a background and I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to do backgrounds. So you'll do your backgrounds and then you'll apply your vinyl. So when you're thinking about your background color, you want to make sure that it's going to work with your the letters, the color that you choose for your letters or your words or your polka dots or your stripes. So I tend to like colors that are kind of bold and um, that you don't, I wouldn't say you don't necessarily expect to see together, but they're a nice contrast. So the good thing about this collection of colors is that everything is a contrast to something else here. So any combination of these is going to be fine. So that's going to be exciting. You are going to need a couple of other things to get started. So I will put my little box aside. I would recommend for you that you get um, a plastic tablecloth or something, or maybe, maybe the weather is nice and you're working outside. Let me tell you, it's upstate New York here and it's the middle end of September and it is hot as blue blazes out there if you could it's hot so I got the tank top I'm schwitzing it's a whole thing so if you if the weather's nice then go outside work outside and if you want to do it by yourself or one of your little nuggets um I have old towels I have old towels everywhere because I paint a lot so something like this is perfect to lay down but uh if you're not working outside I would recommend just throw something down on your surface if you, I'm not wearing an apron now, but I tend to get paint everywhere. So you may want to think about wearing an old shirt, uh, unless you have an old apron laying around. So those are good things just to protect the surface that you are working with. And you're going to want a couple of other things. So I would recommend that you have at least one other, um, rag or towel that you can use just for cleanup. Um, and you actually can distress with these two. So a dry, um, rag is actually a handy thing and I also have a wet one for obviously for cleanups but also you can use this for distressing as well so I'm going to show you how to do that also. Um, one of the other things that you can use and I will show you this method you can use a wet rag for this or if you have baby wipes. Now you could have a wet paper towel but sometimes the little bits of wet paper towel end up sticking to the wood so it doesn't always work but if you're in a pinch a wet paper towel will probably be fine so these are baby wipes though and they actually can do some really neat distressing um staining all kinds of cool stuff so you can have that as well you need a couple of cups i would say at least two cups with water that you are going to use for your paintbrush um don't drink out of these i'm famous for using as you can see 
Old Dunkin' Donuts cups, and I've been known to drink some paint water, but you won't die. Anyone who's ever been to my workshops, I tell them that all the time. You won't die from paint water. So uh, you'll, you know what? If you have a little piece of sandpaper laying around, you can use that. If you don't have sandpaper, it's okay. You can distress without it, but um, if you have a small piece of sandpaper, that might be good as well. Um, two other things that you are going to need. Um, when we're doing the stencils, you're actually going to press or burnish the stencil on, and you really got to make sure it's on good, or you could end up with some bleeding underneath your stencil. So we have burnishing tools, but most people don't. If you have some sort of scraper that you use in the kitchen, you could use that, or one of these. You probably have, like me, in your wallet, I have like three wallets in my purse, don't even ask, I have no idea why. I have store cards to every bloody store that I go to. Do you have a rewards card? I don't know. And then they give me another one. So I have 250 of these things. So, or like a, I don't know, maybe a gift card that's got like 10 cents left on it. So I didn't even know I had an AC more rewards card. Honest to God, didn't even know I had it. And here you go. So you're going to need something to burnish with. So something like a store card or a credit card is good. Um, and the other thing you're going to need for stencils is something that's a weeding tool. So you're going to have to pick some of that stencil off after you've painted. So you could use a couple of different things. I have a toothpick here, so a toothpick works well. Um, the other thing that you could use is um, any kind of pin or a paper clip. So I just have little stick pins here, but if you have a paper clip, a stick pin, if you have a safety pin, a needle, whatever you have, something with a little pointy edge, it's gonna help you with your stencil. So those are all the things that you are going to need to get started. So with my two pumpkins, for my large pumpkin, I'm going to do a, I'm gonna do my monogram. So I have this A, my last name is Allegretto, thanks to my husband, my Italian husband. So I'm gonna do that on mine. I have decided that as far as, and then for the little one, I'm actually gonna do chevron. I'm actually not gonna put any words on it. I'm just gonna do chevron. And I'm gonna do, I think two colors, but I may change my mind as I go. So, there's a couple of different methods. One of the things that you can do is what we call, it's basically staining without stain. It's the poor man's stain. So there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. You can actually mix your paint. This is one of my favorite colors. It's called Cascade, love it. You can mix your paint with water and it doesn't matter exactly how much you put in it. It's gonna give it a milky consistency and you can paint, um, you can use the watery paint, put it on there and what's going to happen is it's going to stain the wood so you can still see the grain of the wood and you can see all the character of the wood, but you get a little bit of color on there. And it's great for the bottom if you're doing a couple of layers. So I am actually going to do that, but I'm going to do that with the black. So we're going to see what that looks like. I don't know. It might not be a good idea, but that's okay because it's wood. And so if you don't love it, you can just paint over it. That's the beauty. So I'm going to use the black and I'm going to use one of our other methods. So the method I'm using it, and by the way, if you have rubber gloves, it's a good idea. Otherwise, you're going to trash your mani. Sorry, girls. Um, all right. So this method is, it's not, I don't even know if it has a name, but basically I'm going to take a little bit of um, paint and I'm going to pour it into a it, this is a baby wipe, but you could absolutely use a wet cloth. I would recommend using a wet one because a dry one is just going to smear the paint everywhere. And what you want is for it to look stained. The reason we started doing this instead of doing the, um, the color wash, which is just mixing the paint directly with the water, is that it takes a little bit longer for that to dry. If you do not have a rag, if you do not have a baby wipe, then you mix a little bit of water with your paint, just pour a little bit of the paint out into a cup with a little bit of water. You don't need that much. It's gonna give it a little milky consistency and you're gonna paint that directly on. Then you're gonna let it dry. So go have a cocktail, go have a cup of coffee, go play with your munchkins, do what you need to do because it's gonna take a little while. And that's kind of the key with all of this. So I am using this method because it's quicker and that's just what I'm feeling. So. If you put the paint directly on the board, what's going to happen is you are going to get like a blob in the middle and that is not going to be super de cute. So you want to put the paint on your pumpkin or your wood and not put your paint directly on the wood um, when you're doing, when you're using this method. Now, if you're doing, um, 
if you just want to put the paint directly on there, you can do that. And I'll show you how to do that in a second. I'm going to show you this. So this is where we are right now. So I am taking this and trying not to get my cute little pink top all covered in paint. And I want to get the edges good. So there's a little bit, this one's a little bit lighter. So you can kind of see, you can see how it's wet, but I will show it to you there. So you can still see the grain of the wood, but you can see I used the black paint on there. So I'm going to do just a little bit. So I'm actually just going to dip this a little bit in the paint, like the tiniest bit. And I'm just going to get those little sides that were a little bit lighter and that'll do that one. So as soon as I'm done with this, my plan is I'm going to have this stained background and then I think I'm going to do a white dry brush on top. I'm just deciding this at the last minute. So I will show you what that is. So this looks like black stain. Hopefully it looks cute. You can see it. It's black. It's got to dry. You can see that it's wet. Okay. So I'm not going to do anything else with it now. I'm going to let it dry. So if you are impatient, you can actually use a hairdryer and have it, uh, it dry it with a hairdryer. It actually, um, it works pretty, it works pretty well. We use them all the time in our workshops. So you can do that if you want it to dry. So I'm actually going to get started on the next one while I'm letting that dry. So I'm going to show you one of the other methods. Now, this is not like, oh, it's a very... It's a very difficult, complicated method. It is not. It is literally straight up painting. So um, one of the things that you can do, um, I love to layer my background. So I love to do a couple of different things. Some people are like, that's, I don't want to get into all that. And that's fine. So if you just want your pumpkin to have a background color, then you're just going to paint it the way you would paint anything else. So I'm going to paint the surface of this with my Cascade. So there is my glorious blue pumpkin. So hopefully you can see um, that right there. So my paint has to dry. My pumpkins are dry. So you can see um, this one here. Actually, I dropped something wet on it, but you can see it a little bit better. I dripped okay. like a drip of water right there. You can see. So I'm going to do another color on the top of this. So you really need the bottom to be dry in order to do that. So what I'm going to be doing is dry brushing. So I will show you how to do that. It's a way of painting where it actually looks distressed and you don't have to do a lot of sanding. So um, I'm going to be painting over this with white. So I definitely wanted this to be dry. Otherwise, I would have like a schmeary gray color, which by the way, also might be cute. So what I did while they were, you might have noticed, what I did while they were drying is I painted the edge of my pumpkin. Don't forget about the edges of your pumpkin. So I painted the edge of my pumpkin with that fun blue color because the monogram letter I'm doing is going to be that color. And so I thought it might be a nice compliment. And don't stress, look, if you miss spots, it's not a big deal because in the end, you'll just stress it a little and you won't even be able to tell. Or go back and fix it or just leave it. It doesn't matter. Everything is, it's homemade. It's rustic. It's supposed to look a little you know, not, not perfect. So what I did in the meantime is I ate some yogurt. I didn't eat some yogurt. What I have here is, if you can see, I put a, I put some black right here, just a little bit of black in the bottom of a cup. What I'm going to do, I'm making a color wash. So for those of you that want to do that, you're going to add a little bit of water to your color wash. So I'm going to show you what the consistency is like. It's kind of milky. The reason I'm doing this is because I decided you can do a color wash before and treat it like a stain and then do another layer on top or just leave it. Honestly, a lot of the people in our workshops will do a color wash and then they'll paint right over it. They'll leave this as their background. It looks really cool. So you can definitely do that. I struggle with, you know, less is more. Um, I struggle with that a little bit. Anyone who knows me knows that. So I added some water to this. So if you can see, it made sort of a milky consistency. So it's kind of drippy. It's sort of watery. That's what you want, okay? There's no rule to how much water can I do this? A little bit of paint, a little bit of water so that it literally looks like dirty paint water. So you can use it underneath, but one of the things that we discovered a couple months ago that we really love is you can do it on top of something as well. And what will happen is it will bring out the character in the wood. It will hide. You can see I'm like I missed some spots there. Can you see that a little bit? 
So it will cover that up. You'll be able to see that wood grain. And it's actually going to tie these two together a little bit. Again, this is just another possible option for you. So I am literally going to, I'm going to hold this up. However, I'm going to be cautious because color wash is some drippy, drippy business and it makes a giant mess. So you can kind of see it's sort of this watery mess. I am literally going to cover the whole thing with this black color wash. And I am telling you, crafty crafters, this stuff, it, it's so amazing how cool it makes things look. And it's so easy to do. And by the way, it also drips everywhere. I've slung it all over myself. Yeah, you're going to want to wear some old clothes. So right now, I've got all this going on. But that's kind of a lot. So what I'm going to do is take take your paper towel, take your rag, take your, your baby wipe, whatever you've got, and you're just going to wipe, start wiping some of that away. Okay. And the more you uh, wipe away, obviously the less distressed it looks. But what's kind of neat, if you want to get that sort of cool vintagey farmhouse look that's ever so popular, thank you, Miss Joanna Gaines, uh, you can wipe more away from the middle and leave a little bit at the edges and the seams because that will give it like a nice natural distressed look. Okay. So again, there's no rule for doing this. Just wipe it until you like the way that it looks. If you feel like you wipe too much away, just put some more on. So this is one of our favorite methods. We've been using it a lot. Um, well, really for the fall stuff. So it's just a really neat way. Plus, let me tell you, it will cover up a boo-boo like nobody's business. So if you painted your pumpkin and you're like, oh, it's a little lackluster. It's just, it's not exactly what I thought it was going to look like or I missed some spots. You can do this and it'll give us, give it a nice distressed feel and you put literally minimal effort. So that is the blue, the cascade with some just a black color wash over the top. So all those spots where you could see that raw wood is now got what looks like a little bit of stain going on. Now that has to dry and then I'm ready to put my stencil on. I'm gonna do the chevron on that. For this one, I'm gonna do a dry brush. So I am going to, because you guys will only have the one paintbrush, by the way, feel free to use as many paint brushes as you want. So I'm going to clean off my brush real quick. So for a dry brush, it's exactly what it sounds like. It doesn't mean that your brush has to be completely dry. What it means is you are not going to use a lot of paint. You're going to use very little paint. In fact, when I dry brush just to sort of force myself not to use too much paint, often I just use what's in the cap. So that doesn't look like a lot. That little bit is going to cover my whole pumpkin. Okay, so... I got my paintbrush, I just rinsed it off in my cup, and I'll just dry it good, and that's all I do. So it's not completely dry. So it's okay if you cleaned off your brush and you have to use it again, it's totally fine. So what you're gonna do is, you're gonna get a little bit of paint now. Dry brush means not a lot of paint. Oh, and if you just rinsed your brush, then it did a little pee pee on you. That's what it did to me. Okay, hold please. So I'm gonna get that good, get, you don't want water dripping off it. It doesn't have to be completely dry, but you wanna make sure it's not like water pouring out of it. All right, so I got my cap, I got my brush. Just a little tap, tap, tap. And you're gonna be like, for real? Yeah, for real. Look at that. Just a little bit, okay? So you use a little bit. And with a very light hand, this is a way of applying the paint that makes it look distressed. The other method is to slap all the paint on and then try to sand it off or rub it off with the rag, which you can do, but it's a lot more work. This requires far less effort. So what you're gonna do is literally just go back and forth very lightly with the brush. And you're just gonna do this in layers until you like the way that it looks. So I actually don't want a ton of this black to show through. So I am actually going to cover a good bit of it with the white. So I'm just going to keep adding paint. I'm going to keep going back and forth, all right, and adding. 
So I've covered mine and I'm going to be honest, I went a little heavy um, towards the end because I really wanted it to be, um, I wanted it to be primarily white. I wanted it to be white. <laughs> it's upside down. I wanted it to be white, but I wanted these distressed edges. So I went a little heavy on the paint towards the end, but the less paint you use, the more distressed it's going to look. And then one of the things that you can do is with your rag that you've used a lot, you can use it to just sort of wipe away some of the paint. So that's what I'm doing just to the edges here, just wiping off some of the paint just to give it a little distressed look. Now this is going to also have to dry because um, we cannot apply our stencil until it's dry. So I am just going to, I'm just rubbing the edges, just distressing it a little bit with the rag. And again, there's no rule to this. You can do it however you want and you can let it dry and just sand it if you want. Um, I just, it's kind of like cheating. I like to do the, I like to use the rag because um, it's like less effort. So if you can see what I'm doing, I like to do this and go right along the edge of where the planks are. Okay. So, and one of the things that I am famous for is using my bare hands. I do that a lot because then it doesn't show, um, where you distressed it with the rag. So you can do that if the paint's still dry. Um, and as soon as you're just happy with how it looks. Now I know some people don't like to distress stuff. If you like things to look a little more classic and not so rustic, then you might want to skip all these sort of weathering, distressing methods and literally just paint it. Just paint it straight, put the stencil on and go from there. So I am actually going to leave this the way it is. I'm kind of digging the way that it looks. I like that it's not perfectly smooth, that it's got um, some character in there. You can see a little bit of the white and I'm probably gonna um, I'm probably gonna sand it a little bit more after it's dry. So this actually needs to dry before I can put the stencil on. So I'm gonna let that suck a dry and my other pumpkin is actually perfectly dry. So I'm gonna show you guys how to apply stencils. So with the polka dots and with the chevron, there's no rhyme or reason. You're just going to peel it off and lay it down. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to peel this off, this chevron off, and just lay it down until it looks good. So, um, and if any of you, I think Duck Brand, one of them makes a tape, like painter's tape that comes in shapes. So you got this little zigzag nonsense going on. And I'm literally just going to eyeball it. I'm famous for eyeballing. If you are the kind of guy that digs perfect straight lines and you want to pull out a ruler, you go right ahead. But for me, I know that it's not going to be perfectly even and I'm totally cool with that. So I literally just laid one of these down. So it's okay. You can have all this going on because you're just going to paint over it. So what I'm going to do with my next one is... I think I might only do two. Let's see, see what it looks like. I might do three. I don't know. You can see what it looks like. I actually think I'm only going to do two. So now I want to show you what happened because you can actually fix this. So see what happened here? I laid it down. Had I shifted the whole top over, but I ended up with this little extra bit over here, which you may not care about. It might make you nuts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some of this off of the end and just sort of extend this a tiny bit. All right. So I cut a piece off of the other end. So I'm going to show you that there. You can see right there where I layered it over the other one and then just laid it down. So as you can see, I just did two because for the small one, it's kind of a lot. And then you can either trim these edges off or just fold them down. So this is where your rewards card is going to come in handy because what you're going to do is you are going to just press this down like pretty firmly. You're going to get rid of any air bubbles and what you're trying to ensure is that the paint doesn't bleed underneath the stencil. Okay. So one of the ways of doing that is by really burnishing it really good. Okay. So I'm going to paint over this whole thing with 
white, kind of like I did with the other one so that you can see it. I thought about doing it in black, but I don't think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna do it in white and then they're gonna be very matchy-matchy. So I'm gonna paint over this in white. I'm gonna do it just the way I did the other one and then I'll show you how to pull off the stuff. <laughs> I did a layer of white on this. Um, I actually think I'm gonna do two layers uh, because I really wanna get some good coverage there. So I have plenty of white, so I'm gonna go over that again. It still needs to dry. You can still see the chevron on there. So I'm gonna put this aside. One of the things I want to mention, um, one of the challenges with stencils is getting bleeding underneath your stencil. So we use the burnishing tool to really press that stencil down. Another key is not using too much paint, like very little paint. So that's why I have to do this in two layers. So um, I'm gonna show you how to apply and do the other stencils. So for these, the polka dots, the chevron, your, you can use your regular paintbrush, but I just, Go easy with the paint. If you're slapping it on, you could get some bleeding underneath, but I'll show you how to fix that too. So I'm going to leave that to dry. And now, remember this guy? He's pretty dry. Okay, so my pumpkin, this pumpkin is now dry. So one of the things I did, so I did a color wash um, with the baby white, which you could do with um, water if you want. So I did that in black, let that dry. And then I dry brushed it with white. So after that, once it was dry, um, or actually while it was wet, I distressed it with a rag a little bit. Once it was dry, I used a little bit of sandpaper and just hit the edges. And the beauty of the sandpaper and using that to help you distress it, if you have it, is that um, it can cover up all manner of weevils. So actually kind of made some boo-boos on the edges, but once you see on them, you can't really tell. So this is actually ready for the stencil. So one of the keys is it has to be dry. If it is not dry, your stencil will not stick. So here is my stencil. So the stencil is like a giant sticker. So on the back, you've got actually um, like backing like you would on a sticker, okay? So the first thing you're gonna do is pull that backing off. So you are just gonna, and you'll know it's the backing because it's got all this writing on it. And if you wanna trim it, you can trim it if it makes it easier for you. If not, don't worry about it. So you're just gonna pull that off slowly, just like this. And again, it's basically a sticker. So just take your time pulling that off. Once you get that off, you obviously don't need that anymore. I'm sorry, Pop, you did not like that. So. Now you've got this shiny, sticky goodness here, okay? So what you're gonna do is you are gonna place that on your wood, on your pumpkin. So I'm actually gonna do this this way and then I'm gonna show you. So you're, there is still a layer on the top and I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do with that. So as soon as you find the placement for it, and honestly, because my pumpkin's a little wonky, I kinda want my letter to be a little wonky. So I'm sort of, on purpose doing it a little sideways because I think it'll be sort of fun. So I got an idea, so I laid it down. I didn't press it all the way down. So if you want to play with it and look at it and be like, hmm, you can pull it up and lay it back down. But if you press the whole thing on there, you're not going to be able to lift it up and take it down a bunch of times. So this right here is exactly where I want it. So now that I've placed it where it's going to be, so just as proof, that this can be messy. All Do you see? That's all the paint splatter from just me painting. So if you made a mess, don't feel bad because I make a mess. Anyway. So you're going to use your burnishing tool and especially along where the letter is, where the opening of the letter is, you're going to press this down. Don't worry if there's bubbles or lines or cracks. It's not going to matter because this top layer is going to come off. So you press this on there the best that you can. Okay, and then once it's on there, once you feel like it's on there, you're gonna be pulling this top layer off. So this top layer, it's called transfer paper. It's essentially like a giant piece of masking tape. So what you wanna do is just get a corner of it and you're gonna pull it off. So you're gonna do it this way. So what I'm doing is I'm actually pressing it up against the board and, sorry, I'm doing this all backwards. And you're just gonna pull gradually just like that. And what you want to make sure is that the vinyl, the stencil, is still sticking to the pumpkin. 
So if it lifts up at all, then just roll it back down, use the burnishing tool or your hand, and make sure the stencil stays down, okay? It can happen from some uh, time to time, the little bits, sometimes they come off on this and you just roll it and stick it back on there. It's totally fine. So if a whole piece comes off and you don't notice, just stick it back on there. Do your best to line it up. So now that we have transferred the stencil on, you no longer need this either. And you're gonna wanna go over this again with the burnishing tool and just make sure it's on there good, especially around where these little cracks are. You're gonna make sure that you press it down good. Now this is where you need to go light and easy with your paint. So in order to help you do that, we have provided you with these lovely little wake up sponges. So you're gonna go really, really easy with the paint. If you glop the paint on here, it's probably gonna bleed. And it'll still be cute, but it won't, you won't get those nice crisp lines, um, which is the whole reason you're using a stencil, okay? It takes the challenge out of it, all right? So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna get a little bit of paint on my makeup sponge. You can see right there. Not a lot, just a little bit, okay? And then you are literally just gonna dab, and I'm dabbing lightly. Like I'm not pressing it down, I really wanna dab it lightly. And the truth of the matter is, you're going to have to do this in layers because it's the only way to get the full coverage without totally um, making a giant mess. Like that is a lot of paint, so you're gonna wanna spread that out. So use just a little bit, and then what you're gonna do is go in layers. So just keep in mind where your stencil is. Now, does that mean if you go over your stencil and go on the board that is totally ruined? No, you can sand it off, you can paint it to fix it, you can, um, you can leave it because it's part of its charm. Um, you can, sometimes you get the cat stuck. Um, you can, um, yeah, you can paint over it, you can sand it, you can scrape it off. I mean, there's a bunch of different methods. That's the beauty of the chalk paint is because um, it's actually great for fixing boo-boos. So how much paint you put on is entirely up to you. So people at workshops are often asking us, did I use enough paint? Do I need to put more on? And that's honestly up to you. If you want your letter to kind of look a little distressed for it not to be um, super dark, then you're maybe going to do like one or two light layers. If you really want it to be dark and crisp and really pop, then I would say do more layers than that. Sometimes actually um, I cheat a little and I'll lift up the edge of the stencil and just look to see if I can see it. Sorry, I'm leaning way over there. Um, sorry, you can see it a little better. So I am going a little bit in between. I'm actually not going to do more than maybe two layers of this. Now, the one thing that kind of makes everyone panic a little bit with this is that you actually do not have to wait until the paint is dry to pull the stencil off. You don't. And this is kind of the part at workshops where everybody's like, <clears throat> they're really scared. It's like pulling off a Band-Aid. So once you've painted it, so I'm thinking this, it feels fine to me. It's not perfect, but I don't want it to be. It's exactly the way I want it. So you're gonna take the edge of that stencil and don't rip it off because you could pull some of the paint off with it, which you don't really wanna do. But again, if you do that, you can fix it. I am just going to pull it across to the side like this and it's pretty sticky. So you're going to do your best to just pull it off and you'll see some of the paints coming off, but um, I it's distressed. So I don't think you can tell and I actually kind of like the way that it looks. So if you run into an issue and I'll show you this, you can see it. If you run into an issue right there where the wood starts to splinter a little bit, it's okay. It happens. Just don't keep tugging on it. You can literally just clip those little pieces off and they're super tiny and you won't even see them. So a really good method is to pull against the grain of the wood. So if you pull it this way, like diet, like I should say perpendicular. Okay. So you're pulling against the grain of the wood, then you're 
probably not going to get as much of that splintering, but it can happen. Just take your time. Um, and it shouldn't be the end of the world. So I'm pulling my stencil. Now you'll notice that all the bits in the middle, you're like, oh, the bits in the middle are still there. And that's okay. That's what your handy dandy little pins are for. Okay. So I got my pin. So I'm going to do my best to do this so that you can see what I'm doing. So you are going to take the edge of your pin and you're going to literally pull. You're just going to pick at the edge of your vinyl. It's just to help you pull the vinyl up. Now, if you have really good fingernails, you might actually be able to pull it up with your fingernails. But if not, I need to get a good grip on this. So I got the toothpick. So once it gets underneath there, you can pull it off with your fingers. So the goal is to use the pin or we at our workshops, we use X-Acto knives. So if you have one laying around, that's awesome. And it pulls those little pieces out. So I'm going to pull the rest of the pieces out of the middle and I'll be back. Okay. Remember this little guy? So I did a couple layers. Um, you can still see a little blue underneath, but I wanted it to look a little distressed. So that's okay. One of the things I'm doing, if you don't have sandpaper that works, but it takes a little elbow grease and I'll show you. So if you take a look at the edges here, this I did with a wet distress, which basically means I took a wet rag or a baby wipe or whatever you have and elbow grease. And I rubbed and rubbed and rubbed until that top layer came off, revealing the bottom layer. Sandpaper is kind of a little bit easier, but actually the wet distressing really looks cool too. So I'm going to do this last little corner here. So you really just rub with the, this is literally just a rag that's wet um, and just rub along the edge and you've got to get your, get your elbows in it because it takes a little elbow grease because it's, it's dried already. Um, because if you don't wait till it dries, then what's going to happen is you're going to blend all these colors together, which might be what you want to do. But if you're just distressing, it's probably not what you want to do. So I'm going to show you right here. So this is what I just did. When I hold it up, you can see a little bit. So those edges are showing through. And sometimes along here is neat too. So I don't know. I just like to do those little, those little crevices. So I'll hit that with a rag and then... I'm going to pull off the stencil and hopefully I will have just the prettiest little chevron pumpkin you ever did see. And probably gonna need a manicure after this because even though I get my nails done a lot, they're constantly jacked up with paint and God knows what else. So you can see how I did. I just rubbed along the the little seams. So I'm going to pull off my stencil. Oh, I keep doing that. Sorry. Pulling off my stencil. Actually really didn't get any bleeding at all, which is kind of nice. And it'll do that. It'll kind of tear apart, which is totally fine because you're checking it anyway. Um, you can't really use these more than once. Um, they don't work out. So see how it'll rip. It's totally fine. They're plastic. So it's okay. Um, pull the whole thing off. And of course, I have a tiny piece left. So again, you can pull out your pin. You can use your fingernails. I have the toothpick still here. So I'm just going to use it to get the edge of that vinyl right there. And then pull it right off. So that is my little pump. We are all dried and we are all weathered. So, ta da! My two pumpkins. So, we got one with a monogram and one that's got a little chevron. I painted the edges black because I thought it would be fun. And that one is, ta da! I think they're cute. I love that they're not um, perfect, they're not supposed to be. It's handmade. Um, and again, if you don't like things to look rustic, then feel free to, to not do all the distressing. But if you are someone who is not a perfect crafter, 
I'm not either. Nobody is really. Um, Distressing is a great way to sort of cover up any little mistakes you make. So I hope you had fun. I hope you love your pumpkins. I have actually plenty of paint left, which is great. Um, And a handy dandy paintbrush. And I still have stencils. So you could just like stencil and paint all the things if you wanted to. So when your pumpkins are done, please post them to our Facebook page because we would love to see them um, and see all the good work you're doing. So I hope you had a great time. Whoa, Thanks, brainstorm.